I have studied uh, the science of metaphysics, which is my heart, for 32 years. Uh, the way that I've gotten into it, some of you have heard on tape, I don't want to kind of go into that too much, but I had a choice between going very corporate, taking on a church, and I call it taking on a church because it was a large church and it entailed a lot of responsibilities, and I'm not a hypocrite, I do not play with the God or the Creator, and or going into the very political world of Chicago, I had opportunity to do that and then go from there. Something changed in my life that really a lot of people don't get the opportunity to have, and I thank the Creator for that. If you hear me use that word Creator, that's my name for the Universal Prime Creator, the First Cause. Everything else becomes religious and secular, and I really not into that in too much anymore. But there have been so many miracles in my life, I'd have to show gratitude to the Most High, to the Creator, for having been um, aware of my need and listening to a little soul like me by having miracles happening in my life. One of the things that happened in 59 and 60, and I preface all of what I'm going to go into with this because it will let you understand me a little bit better. I'm a very frank person, a very honest person, and I do not back down. Sometimes I should. I'll try to walk away from a situation if necessary. But I have principles. I don't like to compromise them. Anytime I have compromised them in my life, I've gotten in trouble, and I don't intend to get in trouble for doing the right thing any longer. If I do the wrong thing, that's one thing, but not for doing the right thing. So I take stand stance. Some people like that, some people don't. I really don't care. I try to tell the truth. Now, with that in mind, I had an incident, um, 59 and 60, by which I had a big decision as to whether to go very corporate or to get into the field of ufology, UFOs. If there was such a thing, I had read a number of books. Uh, they don't have the bombardment that they now have on TV and the media, whereas it was more or less a kind of a clandestine thing. I was 17 years old at that time, and just completing, I was always smart, if you say, and I was just getting out of uh, undergrad school and about to see where I was going to embark. But one thing stood in my mind. If there was anything to this concept about UFOs or what they were called flying saucers, then it meant that all of my little education and all the things that the church had told me, all the things that mother and father had told me were wrong because they were not believers in these things. And if they were, to me, it meant that someplace on earth or someplace somewhere, there were people with intelligence that dwarfed ours. Also a new day. I communicate dot dot did it dot dot dash. Hold up, wait a minute. Kitten in plain sight. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. What's in your community, locally and globally? I'm Vessel 1 and with me, Vessel 2. Hey, quick question. Uh, is it uh, hidden in plain sight? Vessel 1, Vessel 2 talks about kitten in plain sight. And with that, let's get into it. Ooh. Hold it now, wait. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, do you know what time it is? What time is it? It's been a long time. I was giving you time to get the last one straight. Kitten in plain sight. We are faced at this time with some very interesting um, challenges, shall we say. We have a financial system that's in a process of being changed with the extreme right-wing Congress, and I'm not going to stay real political, but political politics are still the backbone of this nation, and they can't be skirted because what happens in Congress and what happens with all of those so-called servants and political machinations that surround that happens to you from taxes on or down. We're finding cutbacks in education. We're finding cutbacks in Medicaid and Medicare. We're finding cutbacks in a lot of programs because there's not enough money for them. We're finding the Social Security system being challenged or possibly even some say bankrupt. We're finding our banking system, again, uh, backed not entirely by the FDICA as it used to be. Uh, we're finding the Federal Reserve making laws that nobody seems to be able to circumvent, and they are controlling our lives, our taxes, everything that we do. Based on all of that now, we're finding that the Cold War supposedly has ceased. The Cold War, of course, was supposedly where we were dumping, meaning we, the United States of America, lots of money into to keep communism from usurping and taking advantage of us and usurping a democratic free form of society, a republic, if you would. We also are finding that those money that used to be spent for that are now free to be spent other ways, but yet the monies aren't there because there's a deficit and we can't balance the budget. Now, make just one statement to you as a lay person, secular as I would be in the ministry, but as a person who is not a politician. 
how in the world can we ever balance a budget if the Federal Reserve charges a dollar for every dollar that they put into circulation? Just that alone will show you that a balanced budget is stupid and silly and should not even be questions because as long as a dollar is being charged by an entity outside of the United States government to print the money, then it means that all money printed will have taxes on it and that is not what a republic is supposed to have happen. But in addition to all of that, we're finding again that there are certain black projects. Now the black projects is a clandestine nefarious overview of having Congress not appropriate money to the Defense Department or to armed forces or any other research arm and yet they are spending literally billions if not trillions of dollars to research into items that are not authorized by the United States government Congress but programs of uh, concepts like time travel like not the stealth bomber but Avro cars with the Avro plant that was uh, blew up uh, 19 I think it was uh, 60 or 59 or something like that, killing some 39 people, injuring 19, a joint project between the Canadian government and the United States government to build electromagnetic saucers all the way back there. They have projects now supposedly on the moon, projects on Mars, projects in time travel, and again, if you hear about the Philadelphia experiment, which I think has made movie history by being constantly circulated over 40 years' time, and about the Montauk project, then you can understand that there are a lot of things going on that are not being corporately funded, not being funded by the government, but still in all are receiving monies. You hear nefarious things about drugs and the people, and especially the inner city youth in about 164 major cities that are drug users and that the drug thing must be stopped. How can the drug thing be stopped when the government seemingly sanctions it or cannot find out what everybody on any city blocks knows where the local pusher is? To put people in jail who consume it and not people who bring it in is ridiculous. If I went on to point out all the things that the United States is guilty of, you'd all in there either crying or hating me for telling the truth. I'll say all you have to do is read certain books, A Higher Form of Killing. Waxman and Paxman came out of uh, England. Uh, read again about the poison needle, Eustace Mullins. Just read about the nefarious things that are being done by this country, not by the citizens. Because I find whether black, white, yellow, or brown, most citizens are not aware of this. And those that do seem to know about it talk about it in hushed terms about why is this happening. It's as though we're led by force or by someone who just is intent on being bad, negative, and no good. Now, if that's trite, then understand that triteness is the basis for goodness. Because when we are children and are not so conformed and brainwashed, we understand right and wrong. We understand basic things we should not do. Then we're told either we can get away with it or we're told it's not bad, and therefore those minds now being sublimated now follow on this new type of teaching authority. Used to be moral authority rested in the church, and non-secular authority rested in the institutions of higher learning. I often wonder what institutions of higher learning are now teaching, because to me they're professing things now that only seem to get us in trouble. The true research scientist that comes up with cures for cancers, comes up with cures for AIDS or proffers those, their laboratories are bombed, their papers are, they're, sometimes they're in prison, again, like in the case of Wilhelm Wrights. It just goes on and on. So I'm saying this, in case you wonder why some of the things that I'm going to get into tonight may be happening or may happen, look no further than your own mirror. Either you've allowed this to happen because you think it's funny or because of naivety, or you know others that you should correct and you're afraid to approach them because they might hurt you or you have no soul yourself about what is right and wrong. Everybody that allows things to go on that should not go on for either fear of safety of self or for naivety or for money profit therefore has to pay when the chips come down. We've done a lot of wrong here. This country is far from being not guilty. At the same time, there are far worse countries and far worse regimes that run those countries. But now, with what is called the New World Order, these things are being amalgamated. The good now becomes the bad, and the bad becomes the not so bad. Things can now be allowed as long as this one rule can come under the guidance now of the government forms that will let one world exist, one means of distribution, manufacture, one means of production, and one world card. Because the end result of the New World Order is to have one world card no money systems, all monetary systems obfuscated. We are finding now that there are old plagues 
that are now coming around to become new scourges. They talk about Lambia Guardia, or Guardia Lambia. They talk about Ebola. They're talking about, again, um, and I have a quote from this um, paper here, if I can find it. I think they call it the Betty Guy or Day Guy, a new disease coming out of Mexico, out of the Mato Grosso, where they're cutting down the trees. They have viruses of all sorts, and of course, the AIDS pandemic not only threatens blacks, but it threatens not only homosexuals, but it threatens heterosexual people from all walks of life. We're finding again that the ozone, the hole that supposedly started over the one of the poles of the United States, has, uh, of the world, has now spread not only over the United States, but over almost all major continents. This hole in the ozone allows ultraviolet UF rays to come through, which are very detrimental to people who have very little skin pigmentation, as well as to people who have a lot of skin pigmentation. What this is causing is melanomas and carcinomas, melanomas of the skin, carcinomas and leukemias of the blood. It is causing the body, which is not able to take in this new ultraviolet energy, this new energy rays, to burn, to fry. It causes, again, an imbalance within the, um, um, the glandular systems against the things that are secreted. It causes, again, as I say, the blood to become toxic. And once we reach a crisis of toxemia, disease and imbalance always sets in. We have as though the planet was actually turning on us. That was a short um, but fulfilling segment of uh, introduction of Dr. Dilbert Blair. And he had a lot to say. Uh, some of it was very uh, before his time. I believe that uh, a video was late 90s. Yeah, that's uh, it seems like what he touched upon is what we're facing right now. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, stemming from economics to uh, the war drums that are being being beaten, and especially with the so-called virus that has just been unleashed upon the people, and a lot of the symptoms that he said in that video are some of the symptoms that are happening now to people. So yeah, he was very insightful, and it's uh, it's a lot of information that probably he was sharing that put him on radars that didn't want him to be talking. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You know. Now, for those out there in podcast land listening, please like, share, and uh, comment down below. Let us know your thoughts. Um, are we doing our job by bringing this information to you? Um, do you like uh, the subject matter that we are uh, presenting? Uh, and if you like to know more, please contact us, or you can go to any of our outlets and um, go through the library and uh, seek out more of our prior uh, episodes or um, uh, podcasts. Um, well, let's move on and continue to dive into Mr. or Dr. Dilbert Blair. Behind, it profits now the knell of the death bell. For it means that if our planet can take in new energy, and if the electromagnetic field or frequency barrier barrier can be altered so that higher frequencies can come in and that pineal gland kicks in, then you will be once again in tune with your planet. And mankind having no soul, having only the ability to report to the Lord God Master, will go crazy and begin to dysfunction and do crazy things. Human, who is part of both, will begin to question and try to follow its higher source 
and the whole thing will lead to tremendous wars or tremendous conflagrations. The war will last no time if the sons of God can awaken to who they are. Because once they get in tune with the planetary head, the planet will do whatever they as a unit ask for. That is what some of the Yoruba people understood, what the magicians understand, and in a small way try once more to get in frequency with the slower heavens just above where they live or on their continent, or the elemental kingdom can obey. It was meant that the sons of God, being of the seed of angels, didn't have to even do that. They could summon, they could call forth, they could put aside. But before any of that could be done, they had to first come into the consciousness and frequency of who they were. Again, I kind of repeat what I said when I was here before. This summer, you will hear, and starting this summer, probably for the next three years, about the sunspot activity being on the increase. You'll begin to hear more again about solar activity, prominences, all types of energy from the sun that will be very harmful. You'll hear about ultraviolet light, burning tissue, and melanomas, and carcinomas affecting the blood and the skin of people on earth. For the sons of God who have an active pineal, that will be a day of blessing, for it will not affect you. You will not be burned, you will simply darken, and the melanin growing, it's almost like a vicious cycle to make you more and more powerful. As they get cancers of the skin and glands, you will get glands beginning to awaken and throwing out the frequencies that are not good and reconnecting the DNA molecules that were separated. Uh, that's a two. Thoughts, comments. Yeah, I believe we have this problem still today, but it seems as if they're trying to darken or dimming, dimming the sky with all the chemicals that they're spraying in the sky constantly and the particle matter that's coming down from what they say is heavily laced with aluminum, which is not good for us to be consuming or breathing. And we consume it via the food. The crops are grown and, and the chemical waste coming out of the skies. Yeah, that's uh, very insightful what he's putting out. How about you? What are, what are your thoughts? Well, um, <clears throat> just like the elder um, um, Blair, Dr. Blair, uh, our other um, many elders that's out there that was speaking upon uh, um, one I'm specifically speaking of is Dr. Robert X. Um, he he have done similar forms of that was speaking about um, the planning of uh, blocking out the sun rays and and attacking or having things to attack our um, pineal gland or the third eye from awakening. And obviously uh, these elders have some uh, understanding of what these plots or these uh, certain individuals are trying to do. They are trying to promit or uh, shun the natural universal evolution of certain individuals and um yeah it, uh we just left 2022 and now 2023 and yeah i have heard something recently talking about there's going to be a lot more activities on the sun solar flares and such so um, it seemed like it's coming to pass. And again, he was speaking about things that were, uh, that's happening now. So yes, that's off to 
Dr. Blair. Astrology was not meant to be a guidepost for every action you take with your newborn or with yourself. It was to be only a guide, not an instruction manual, but a guide showing you the different programs that your TV sets could bring on, and then you tune into what program you want. The stars do not impel you to do anything. I'm sorry, they do not compel you to do anything. They impel you in a direction that you already want to go, and that's why you choose to follow that particular star sign. Why am I saying this? By understanding when your child came in, you will get a general tendency as to its strengths and weaknesses. Advanced souls make astrology. They do not follow astrology. They can be as different from their sign ascending, natal or otherwise, as night and day. And understand also that because of the progression of the equinoxes, our signs are off 30 degrees anyway. I keep saying this because so many of us are choosing astrology now to escape to, saying again, that child was born like this, was under that sign, and that's my Gemini, and that's my... No, sir. These souls make or break astrology. They make or break stars. They are free souls in a free will zone and they're here to express. Never educate a person you're going to dominate. That's a no-no. You train them. So we're trained to hold jobs. We're trained to be taught a certain way. We're not trained so that you can begin to create. And yet blacks create everything you can think of. You go back through the list of inventions by black Almost everything you find out there was invented by a black person. Another short but prominent video by Dr. Blair. Um, any any thoughts, or you, or shall we push on? Yeah, it was an interesting clip. Uh, what he said was definitely true. Uh, right. Especially coming from America, we have a history of uh, where it was illegal for people to be able to read and write according to laws that were structured. Then once those laws were abandoned and abolished, uh, we were able to read and write and we got proficient enough to where we were able to set up our own businesses and thrive in our own communities without really any integration with others. And our money economically was circulating in our community from what I heard up the, towards 30 to 36 times before it even left our community to go be spent elsewhere. And then they put a monkey wrench in the system by 1954, I believe, was when they declared it was unconstitutional for segregated school, schools. So they started forcing us to go to school with everybody else, hence them teaching us how to be worker bees instead of us learning how to be business-minded and business owners. So yeah, that was very, pretty much on point. All right. Oh. Okay. Let's dig more knowledge of Dr. Blair. You must awaken now. You are the melanin carriers on this planet. You were the original 12-stranded people, and you were given that privilege through a whole lot of work and time. It was not something given to you by chance. Because you fell from grace and sought to make better than your creator, you suffered by that that you created, and then also was brought to your planet that that you created in a higher form. In other words, once you think that you are a God, you must act God-like, not sometime, but all the time. Because once a God falls short, there are so many things that are not God-like just waiting to lapdog you up and tear you apart that you're open then to the whole. Everybody on earth that has a soul sleeps. 
unless you're very refined, and even then you may sleep at least once a month. Sleep merely means that your body can no longer hold the soul because it's run out of energy, and the body becomes so despicably horrible to the soul that until it cleans up itself, the soul leaves. So each night you die. You will die every three days, or you will die standing up. People go to sleep standing up. Mm -hmm. People had guard duty, just go and sleep. They'll, they'll, they'll be with you, you know, they're still there. But you have to go to sleep because the energy in your body is not strong enough to maintain you. Mm. So you have to get out so the body can renew itself. You, as a soul, go out and receive some energy, jump back into the body, and then you go. Mm. Now, if that is the case, then you have to ask, what trip did you take? Where did you go? What is the action? And what is the reaction? That is another whole case. The sun is not hot. The sun is not bright. The sun is a energy governor. That's why they tell you it's nothing new under a sun. Any planet under a sun cannot govern itself until it can begin to be part of a sun itself, or the people get so illuminated that the planet begins to shine like a sun. Illumination cannot come with those who don't have souls because the illumined orbit in you is that little bright light that is your sun shined up here in the hypothalamus through your pineal gland. Can I make it any plainer? I don't think so. Beast, and it's called simply Hugh Man. Oh, magnificent beast of this strange, enchanted land, you roam your asphalt jungle clothed in skin that we call man. Insensitive, incredulous, and congress to all of God's created works that you find both large and small. Just how long can you wander in your self-created web of total make-believe about who and what was said, changing who, changing how, and what was in antiquity, as a whole world comes to know how you've lied of history? By distortion, deletion, deception, and disguise, you've altered written records from the cosmos to our skies. You've reconstructed universes and summoned even hell, and there seems to be no end to the lies your mouth can tell. What you view on graphs and prisms, what you see in lens and scope seems too staggering to your mind and ego brain, and so to cope. You'll distort the very heavens, you'll change the smallest beast, and there seems to be no end to let your fame to cease, and yet you know within from the most unto the least that your time is running out, and your lies they soon must cease. As we view each bright new morning, even through polluted skies, we know there is a creator, for creation never lies. And so we come together, we new ages tried and true, seeking blessings from our creator and divine release from you. I thank you. When you get past the reptile brain, now you open into the land of Oz. <laughs> You don't get caught following the yellow brick way and all the other yellow things and hoppies and poppies and everything else. You might get to see the master of Oz, the wizard, the wise one, because he and she is up there at the same time rooting you. It doesn't matter you didn't go to that session, you went to the other one and got sidetracked a little bit. So as you journey into Oz, you're now journeying into Oz like, and backwards, Oz is Zoe, with two. Oh, it's a zoo. So whether you stay on one or the other, it's just a matter of what journey and what trail you're going to take. The planet is her chosen to take her trail now. It's going to be a female incarnation. And that is, you're going to have to speed up your vibrations. Eat right, think right, and try to do right. You're going to find all kind of opposition at this time for anybody that tries to do that. Because that reptile brain and the dracons that it represents don't want this planet to go up there because if it does, they can't go with it. And then the biggest food source, mentally, physically, and spiritually, you will be gone. The biggest food source, mentally, spiritually, and physically, will be gone. You say, nobody can eat me. Nobody can eat me mentally or physically or spiritually. Well, yes, they can. Because your life force has a certain vibration. You get it too clean, it's like, again, if you eat something too dirty, it <clears throat> mess over you. When you're vibrating in a certain way, you have energy that's going through you that some creatures can't stand. 
your best protection is how fast you vibrate. Because it's like some of these little, they got a cockroach, they got a spider, and they got some kind of a, a fly that everything can eat. But it gives off a nasty vibration and a poison and a smell, and most of the big creatures leave it alone because it's not worth the effort. Stomping maybe, but that's about it, they're not going to eat it. Because the vibrations are so out of tune with what that creature can eat that it can't eat them anymore. The dinar, the yen, the pound sterling, the franc, the dollar, uh, it doesn't even matter. These are all denominations of money that allied nations accept, and they therefore give you goods for the exchange of that money, and to the power of the might, not of the banking system, but of the army behind them, they're accepted. All of these are substitutes. Gaddafi, of course, was a genius, and what he did we've talked about. I don't have time for that one, but he also was going to get solar panels that were going to be manufactured. He went with this guy uh, in Algiers, Wales, and they were going to actually build solar panels for South Africa, I'm sorry, for North Africa and Southern Europe, which would made him make even more money. The man was making about a million dollars a second, all that. That was to depose him because he was a black man that stood up and stood up for his country. That's neither here nor there either. All of these depositions now are because regime heads are going to have to change. They're no longer going to be heads of state. The state will be a state of consciousness headed by the universal prime creator. Therefore, mankind and human will have to relinquish all these stones, whether they did right or wrong. People have got to awaken that they're self-governed, and this is what sovereignty is all about. You can't gain one without the other. The second thing that you ask about, I'm sorry, about the clouds seeming closer, that's because they're spraying night and day now. <laughs> these planes or wherever they come from are spraying chemtrails like mad. It is not so much that they're natural cloud formation. There's no such thing as a natural cloud formation now because it's all intertwined with, with Dracon-made atmospheres to keep them safe and to try and stop these energy rays from the sun from awakening people and causing our planet to wake up. You're going to find pretty soon there will be three days of darkness. You're going to find that there will be a whole change of weather. It will get to one temperature, and darkness will become light. These are not as far away as you think. Everything is under change. This whole planet is graduating. If you're going to graduate with her, relinquish all those things you were t taught and begin to follow that insight, that secret thing. People say that first mind. Follow that first mind. Sleep on it. Used to people say when they had contracts and stuff, they said, I've got to go sleep on it. Why did they sleep on it? Because they could contact higher beings. They could calmly ask for spiritual guidance. Now we've forgotten that. We contact a psychiatrist. We go to the pharmacist to score so we can forget our pains and aches and, and escape for a while. We go to religious consciousness, trying to go through everything but what we should. Why we're here, where we come from, where are we going. And if you can't ask that question, you can answer now. Sleep on it. Our planet has come under a period of ignorance dumbness and lowered vibration and that time is now to move it is past there is no reason for ignorance dumbness or lowered vibration if you want and if you happen to be of the sons of the god and you don't respond to it you will soon be dead now isn't that a big threat i'm not making the threat i'm interpreting new and future knowledge as a metaphysician is supposed to you have to find out whether you can agree with it or not there is no truth until you decide what truth is, and each person should find that truth out for his or herself. Human, by which if you look in the encyclopedias and dictionary, it says we're all human beings. That's a lie. We are not all human beings. Human is animal man. Hugh was a god Hugh, which roared the lower planes again under the old teaching of the ancient Sudanese and, Nub and Nubian people, and later on, the so-called Egyptian people, which was a mixed race. You're going to find out just how mixed in a minute. Human did not come from God, or what we call the Creator, but from lords, or what we now call the Lord God and animals. They were a creation by scientists who we now refer to as Lord Gods. And they made human by engrafting and changing the animal life at different times as they found it on this planet and from other planets and dropped them off here. God man, this is the key and the ones that had the key to the Sphinx and the pyramid, were from the sons of gods or which we now refer to as the angels. 
and they were a cross between mankind and the sons of gods or the angels. Understand this, in fundamentalist teachings, angels are those spirits who represent the Most High and who fly around with wings and live where this in Herod or some of the lower heavens and do the biddings of God himself. That is a fundamentalist interpretation. I do not decry a religion. I do not argue religion. I say that is only one interpretation of an angel. The other is those who mastered the angles, those who could bend light rays, those who understood the four pillars of the sacred sign of the swastika, which was not called the swastika, but a whole different name. It mastered those who could understood the four rays of consciousness necessary to exist on the fourth dimension, which Earth was supposed to have been into millions of years ago, but got held back by humans. Now, as humans who are we going to begin to die out and the sons of God must come to the fore so the angels can return, that awakened person is the one that will now go through changes like you have not seen as he attempts to throw off the dross, the animal, and come into his own consciousness. Mankind came from the lords of different planets and was soulless and could not reproduce. I repeat the three. Human, animal man, made from animal species both on this planet and other planets. God man, the sons of God and also sometimes interpreting with mankind, a made person again by Lord gods on other planets. And mankind again by strictly the lords of other planets in this one. Obviously you can begin to see what I'm inferring. This has nothing to do with the creator, the prime causation, the cosmic universal logoi. This has to do with people who evolve up the ladder and because of their knowledge of genetics, their knowledge of geography, their knowledge of astronomy, I'm sorry, astrology, their knowledge of astrophysics, when they come to a planet, you treat them like gods. All of the series that you see now, Babylon 5, Deep Space Nine and all the rest of it are trying to show you what really may exist in this system and in other systems to let you come into what is now called the planetary brotherhood. To awaken from the idea that you are a lone important species, you are not. But now the Earth is becoming an important place as we will find out for numbers of reasons over this weekend as we get deeper even tomorrow than we're going to go tonight. This is to awaken those who are not soulless but have deep spiritual souls. One of the things that black people have found consistently is that in the face of adversity, they sing. In the face of adversity, they can laugh. In the face of adversity, they come together as a unit. And one thing seems to bother them. They know that they're supposed to worship something. They know that they're supposed to be spiritual entities, but they're not finding the results sometimes strong enough. They have found that in following religions, fervently enough, really getting on fire with it, miracles do happen. But down deep, they're not satisfied because they still feel there ought to be a shortcut, and they know that something's there, but it's just not quite right, and daggone it, it frustrates me no end. How many of you have actually felt like that? Don't lie, if you haven't, you haven't. Most of you do. That's why the church is now, the people are going to the strongest word, the best choir, and the best place where they can also make money and meet good mates, and they're falling away from the little churches that just can't make it anymore. Fundamentalism is separating from the advanced spiritual person. Again, I say this, and don't say I came here and talked about the churches and put them down. I'm not. Let each person go to any church they choose. It is their choosing. They will be responsible for their own souls if they have one. I'm saying that there's a difference between a spiritual person and a religious person. A spiritual person does not need a church for the home and temple of God that they find their souls in is the church and how they keep it clean and how they keep it out of ignorance and what they do with it shows their manifestation of the God life. For the other, they need a religious fervor and constantly reminded because they do not have quite the soul that is risen to the point where they can again manifest the creator within them. 
so they constantly have to remind themselves as a herd come together to give themselves the strength to carry on. That is changing. That's why you're going to find the church being attacked like never before and leaders in false churches falling like never before and that's why the fall wells and all the rest of it and you find them like little animals attacking each other, each one pulling each other down and the congregation suffering from it. Because man must learn he does not have to go to a church, he is the church. Damn. That's some heavy stuff there, boy. He didn't open the whole can of worms on that one. Uh, what say you, Mr. He's bowling down somebody's alley. <laughs> I mean, it, it, you know what I'm saying? Everything he said, you can see it happening even now. For You know, again, going back to the elder, Dr. Robert X, he, he stated this as well. Uh, and you can, you also can see it. Uh, you know, the church have, having problems. You know, people are... Uh, doubt have doubt of uh, of faith right now, uh, so, uh, especially through the last, past couple of years through this pandemic. There have been a lot of questions and a lot of things that people are not satisfied with the answers. And yeah, and it's it, it's you know it's one of those things that's uh, actually coming to pass again, you know, predicting the future. Uh, yeah, yeah. That yeah that's be. that's that was a, a lot to unpack, but yeah, that's uh, it's still true. There's a lot of people caught in the pews of the churches, and what they're getting out of that, I have no idea. But mm. you know, if it's keeping them out of trouble, then I guess it's working. But to what end? The man said, "You yeah. don't need the church. You are the church." So. Right, you know, you you have to do for self. Right, the planetary vibrations are changing everywhere. The Dracons, who have always been fighting you in the first place, know that if you can ascend to that consciousness, you will get past the heaven that they're on, which is a hell. This is when they made heaven a hell because they got on the fourth dimension. Many of you now are experiencing the fourth dimension. Many of you now are seeing shadow people and things out the corner of your eye. Many of you people now aren't sleeping much at night, but you're not waking up like you're all sleeping and tired. You're waking up nervous and tertiary because you want to understand, wow, it's another time. My sleep is not necessary, but what I have to do in sleep, I have to do in the flesh. Most people now are speeding up in vibration. Most people now, the days are flying by. As soon as you go to sleep, you're waking up because we're going to a higher dimension. The fifth dimension would be like the fifth heaven. Remember, ahead of their time, almost for 30 years, the fifth dimension, we came out with two songs that were good. Surrey, which went a little bit, but what Aquarius. We're in, in the age of Aquarius, when the moon uh, reached the seventh house, and Mercury and Jupiter, when Jupiter lies with Mars, and all, we're in that dimension. They were for tellers. They were fortune tellers to tell you where you were going, when you were going. Now they'll even tell you it's supposed to be on December 21st, 2012, which means it's almost 2013, and then we'll be in the fifth dimension. If that is the case, and we all conjectured, we have to reach our own truths here, that means that on that date, or close to it, we will now be fifth dimensional, which means that all of our protagonists, all of our enemies, all of our problems that came from the reptoid dracon combination that has been trying to hold back this whole galaxy, they will now be beneath you because they are fourth dimensionals trying to affect and doing very well and interfere with third dimensionals. They're not supposed to do that in the creator's houses, I understand, but they're doing it. You say, well, they're getting away with it. No, they're not getting away with it. They're doing it and being recorded what is happening. There is so much going on, and I don't want to jump here until a little bit later, but I'll jump here then because we will go through a final Q&A, and it'll take about 45 minutes. There is so much going on on our planet right now, most of us are not aware. Keep in mind this. The kind of unrighteous, unspiritual forces that are now in control of this planet and have been for some time, they're not the creator, but they've been controlling this planet, do not want you to be spiritual. And they don't want to give you time to think and they always try to bring something that makes you aware of the physical and makes you forget the metaphysical. That's why they do all the things with the weather, 
That's why they do all the things with the drugs. That's why they're genetically modifying the food. That's why they're putting uh, poisons and mercury and things into the water. That's why they have you using these cell phones and computers and everything else, which are necessary so they tell you to conduct business, and they're right, but not when they're giving you ELF propagations, which is killing your physical body, stopping you from getting into higher consciousness because you're too worried about the cancers and things that what they're giving you is causing. So I say again, a wise person does not avert the truth. A wise person uses the truth and then makes that truth his or her truth by making that truth bend just enough where it becomes a practical truth. If you've got to use a cell phone, if you've got to use a computer, if you've got to drive a car, if you've got to use a microwave oven, if you've got to use a digitally enhanced pixelated TV set, put a diode on it. If you're going to go to sleep at night, sleep on a diode pad so your dreams become more retrospect and honest rather than the things coming from pain in the back and all because the radiation is now affecting you. Everything that's on this planet now must be revealed. No stone will not be turned because everything that has been hidden in the earth and in the stones is now being revealed. Most of the things are hidden in crystals. That's why they're telling you don't use crystals. Crystals now cost all kind of money because locked in the crystal is the same thing that's locked in your blood. Your blood is a river of life. Your red corpuscles and white corpuscles are composed of crystals. And when they dry out, they form hexacons. They begin to form sacred geometry. The river of life is your blood in your veins, and it is now going to a higher dimension. That's why you're moved to stop eating the meat so much. That's why you're moved to get into the juices, because you've now got to give that river of life the true energy so you can begin to glow from the inside out, and people are beginning to do that. When you fast, your soul shines through. You get clearer in skin. I didn't see what your complexion was. It becomes clear. There's a radiant glow that comes around you. Around Paragon, there was a blue glow around that planet, which lets you know the dimension that that planet was on. There's an energy field around all. Some people can see auras. Some people can see what they call the nimbus. Every time you think a good thought, it registers in the field of energy around you. The combined thoughts make up a neighborhood. Oh, let's start with it again. Make up a family. The combined thoughts of a family make up a neighborhood. The combined thoughts of a neighborhood make up a city. The combined thoughts of a city make up a state. The combined thoughts of a state make up what? A county or so on like that again. On down the line till you get into countries and then you get into planet. Each planet around it, what they call the Akashic Record, the energy field, the nimbus of this planet, reflects the overall thoughts of this planet and as this planet is, is how this planet will be judged. You are the mitochondria, it can be referred to you as that, but that's all you are, of this cell in the Creator's body that is called Earth. What they did in the movie was to take all of that, make it just simple, going from one cell to another cell that was light years ahead, because those people there were on a different dimension. The dimension they were on was a fourth dimension. And just as the evil ones came to Earth and tried to wreak havoc, they went to Pandora and tried to wreak havoc again too. What they weren't successful on Earth in doing, this is why they had to get a higher form of metal to come back so they could begin to go to the dimension that they didn't earn spiritually, they tried to get there physically. When you try to go to another planet physically and not mentally, you will fail. And if you go there, you have to wear a breathing apparatus, you have to conform because you're not right for that planet. I'm not talking about the moon now. The moon is not a planet. That's an artificial satellite is up there to, to hold you back. We'll talk about that near the end of this. Okay. Another heavy segment of thoughts there from Dr. Blair. What say you, Russell, too? Yeah, that was a deep video. He, he covered a lot of information as well there. Uh, and he said that we should be walking on snake peoples. <laughs> mm, exactly. Yeah. And the people who are in control aren't supposed to be in control. Right. And they are the ones who are mucking up the planet. That's right. And giving the planet a bad name. And mm. so, so some people can't name those people because if you start naming those people then I guess you get banned and shadow banned and uh, they start emptying out your bank account in fines <laughs> if, yeah. if you mention who he was referring to 
Yeah. There you go. That's crazy. It is crazy. Isn't it? Once again, we'd like to uh, thank Dr. Gilbert Blair, uh, rest in power. Uh, he transitioned several years ago. Uh, born on February 13th, and he was from Chicago. He's a prolific poet, Afro historian, metaphysicist, and nutritionist, and also uh, wrote several books. Um, some, uh, if you have a chance, uh, these were mostly the top choices is um, a book by Dr. Blair, The World Within, uh, Man, Woman, and Child, uh, My Close Encounter with an Extraterrestrial. Uh, those are written by Dr. Blair. And if you want to know more about the man, the elder, I suggest you do so. Um like always, the links and more information will be posted in the comment section below. Um, not to go too much in detail, as you know, uh, this month is hist History Month in America. I will refrain from using colors because we it's not about that. Um, and since it's 2023, and, and speaking of positiveness, which the world needs, uh, since recently, with all the crime and monotonous and things that's happening within the hoods and ghettos of America, uh, it's time for some uplifting, uh, uplifting, and to focus on something that can inter uh, interrate some positiveness and unification um, in the in the hood. Um, again, um, thank you, listeners, um, hipsters, for tuning in and supporting, sticking with us. Again, like, share. Um, this is Vessel 1 with Vessel 2. When we're going to sign out. Vessel 2, any last thoughts, comments? Yes. Final thoughts. Research, research, research. As you can see, the internet gives you information directly placed at your fingertips. Uh, there's a lot of research that's already been done. We will try to continue to bring you more uh, research that you can use going forward. As Dr. Blair said, everything is moving on a higher vibration. So make sure you stand on your square, eat right, sleep right, take care of your loved ones. Think for yourself. Sleep on it if you have to. That way you'll get clarity on anything that's might be an obstacle in your way. Until next podcast, please be safe. Peace. Peace.